welcome to another episode of your favorite podcast. It's Lucky Time Explosion. Wow. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday, everybody. Happy Start Monday. Of the week. Uh, this is Lucky Time Explosion, your source for art news, art chatter, interviews with local artists here in New York City, and it's made possible by Solace Studio. Come check us out. Get your prints, framing, all that good stuff. We do it all. We also show art. We have an opening next Tuesday, too. Tomorrow. Yeah, I know. Next Tuesday is oh tomorrow. God. Next Tuesday is literally tomorrow. That's crazy. It is crazy. You know what else is crazy? What? Uh, some art headlines. Some oh, news my we got. God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, this is my favorite one. Uh, this is from Art News. Uh, Vienna museums uh, have uh, opened their doors, and they're getting rid of their... Uh, a ticket admission price for Taylor Swift fans because they had to cancel a concert due to uh, safety concerns. Right, right. So right. now if you're a Swifty, you can go get some free art education in they, Vienna. They should hand out free Vienna fingers. <laughs> those little sausages? Yeah, I, I thought love they those were, little sausages. The, they're sausages? I thought they were like, don't they make those like cookies with the cream in the middle? The that's tip? true, that's true. Is that called Vienna? Am I think I, those I'm are lady fingers, but you might, no, Vienna, you might be right. You might be right. Well, they might well be... we have a European with us today. We yeah, should probably maybe you can ask. help us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, joining us today is Esther. Oh my God, I'm going to do it again. Uh, Bersha. 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 Oh, I got it right. <laughs> yes. Uh, so Esther, where you came from Germany in 2013 from to New York? Ge yes, I came from Germany to uh, New York in 2013 as a photography student. Photography, huh? Photography. Hmm, let's see. Talk into your mic a little more directly, I think. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So you came, you came to study photo? I came, I came to study photo. So at that time, there was the switch between um, analog and digital technology in photography. Oh, yes. And photography in, in Germany, I'm, not, I'm probably not supposed to say that, but photography in Germany was die, dying a little bit. It's kind of dying everywhere it's at the time. Dying, it was kind of dying every, every, a little bit, and there was a lot of confusion. When you say it was dying, do you mean it was dying like an art form, or was it uh, film itself? You're talking about well, well, film, film was dying. So partially, or oh, there was a lot of uh, conflict between uh, people who were, who were into working digitally and mm. um, people who um, were valuing analog photography. What do you prefer? That's never. What do you prefer, away. digital or analog? I I like. Both for, like both for for different reasons. Huh? Yeah, they have their they have yeah. their uses and reasons, right? So digital is very practical and very, very affordable. So it means ev everybody can do it, and it connects artists. But it connect yeah, it connects everybody. Like every everybody loves photo photo. Everybody loves photography. Um, do you think everybody should do it? I I I say I think everybody should do it. You think everybody um, should make art? Hmm. Do you think everybody should make art? I. I you ever see? Did you see Exit Through the Gift Shop? That movie? No. Okay, so Banksy made this movie. Uh, also in the headlines. In is, the is headlines Banksy. right now. Yeah, yeah, he's in the headlines again because he's done a few <laughs> different um, pieces around London following the um, anti-immigrant uh, demonstrations and counter protests, and you know everything's popping off over there. Uh, but he made this movie called Exit Through the Gift Shop. Uh, and the, oh, the, yeah. the subject of that film was a dude we met uh, at Very DTR. Very nice man. Yeah, Mr. Brainwash, uh, who actually is related to the art news headlines again because his cousin, Space Invader, mm -hmm. uh, is, who is showing art at the Olympics now. I think it's kind of cool, but like... And that was his cousin. That's how we got, me, dude, how we got to meet Banksy. Has the guy who created Space Invader ever like tried to sue? What, What's Space it? Invader? Yeah. Oh, you mean the guy who created the game? Yeah. No, I don't think you can. I think as an artist, uh, you have a lot of leeway there. Although, if it is your only thing, I wonder. You know what I mean? I wonder where the line is. I'm sure we're going to see more of that in the future, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, where does the line go? Uh, I know this is a little tangential, but I do remember when Mickey Mouse celebrated its 100-year <laughs> anniversary. Um, they had a big art show all over the world. Disney put on fine art shows in galleries. Uh, featuring Mickey Mouse because so many street artists and contemporary artists had used Mickey Mouse and they couldn't sue them. Disney's notoriously litigious. They would have if they could have, uh, but they couldn't sue them because of like parody law and the ability to use stuff uh, 
in your art that is a cultural, um, you know, something as basic as Mickey Mouse. Uh, and so instead of, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. They had, a, <laughs> they had a giant art gallery show and they invited all these artists who oh, had used cool. Mickey Mouse mm -hmm. in their work. That's where our buddy Wizard Skull had like a giant, uh, one of his Wiggle Mickeys was like this in the entrance into the Very Australian, cool. one of the Australian now shows. Um, but yeah, so that was, that was other headlines in the news. Banks, he was there. He's in a horror movie now. Who? Mickey Mouse. Oh, Steam yeah, right. Willie. Steam like Willie. Some guy with a Mickey Mouse mask terrorizing New York City. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, because he went... Um, sounds so boring. <laughs> it's like the food. It yeah. kind of sounds like something I'm interested well, in. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think the... bo boring can be very interesting. It, it, oh, I, I agree. <laughs> Did you like... see the, uh, the Winnie the Pooh? They redid Winnie yeah. the Pooh. Did you see the horror movie? What'd you think? I'm not surprised. <laughs> I mean, the makeup, the, the mask is pretty creepy. I mean, yeah. there's no doubt. Like, you know, do you, do you know about this movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the Christopher Wiki Robbins, like, you know, he left them and like, he went to be a real boy again. And then like, he forgot about them. And then he like graduates from college and he has a girlfriend. He's like, oh, I want to, I want to introduce you to Pooh. Yeah. Not his feces. <laughs> so he's like, okay. And then what he didn't realize is that when he left the forest, they lost their minds without the direction of Christopher Robbins and they oh. ate Eeyore. They like became they kind of, him? they, right. They, they ate Eeyore. Oh my God. And they're pissed. Yeah. They're pissed <laughs> that he left. They lost their fucking minds without him. Mm. And then he goes back and they immediately like bash his girlfriend's head in Good and then Lord. they tie him <laughs> up and make him cry. And it's God. like, Poo! I love, become? <laughs> I love our like culture. The second ass. something becomes open source, we can just. Uh... I, 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 grew, I grew up in the 80s and 90s in Germany. Oh. So I, I love everything that is weird. Uh, yes. So you're into horror, though. You... And that's, yeah, yeah. And, uh, so nice. I love. Ev so I grew. Yeah. What do you think of the Saturday Night Live sketch, uh, Dieter and Sprockets? Uh, Dieter. Do you know that one? <laughs> <laughs> Because they said they were going to make a movie about that, and they haven't done no. it. No, I read about that. I, it didn't. It didn't come to fruition, which is a shame because that would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah, I've I've been avoiding it to be honest because when when I was a teenager, we ha we had so we so in Europe there's a lot of copycats of mm. the American shows. If something works oh, in America, yeah. then in Europe it takes a year or two. They're like, okay, we have our own version. Now we have like we have our Saturday night version. Saturday we have our night. Germany's next top top model. We does, have does our, Germany like, have a carbon so copy Germany, of me, like Morgan Jesse Lappin? I, sure. they, they should have. <laughs> <laughs> if not, if not, they have It's on the way. So, so however. So the main star of of the Saturday Night Love mm -hmm. show, uh, and myself, we share we share the same same first name. Oh yeah. So her name was Esther Schweins, and Schweins is not a good last name. No. So um, when when I was a teenager, it it didn't end, let's say it didn't end well for me. Oh yeah, <laughs> you got, I got made fun of my name. I got fun, made fun of a lot. Huh? I, I got fun of my yeah. name too because my last name is Wise Carver. And oh, uh, people think it's like made up. I got wisecracker all the time. No you know, way. not the same kind of association though. Uh, is that that's not why you fled uh, Germany and came <laughs> to New York in 2013, though, is it? No, <laughs> no. I got I got very interested in American photographers mm. and in the American photography. Who is your scene. favorite American photographer? Diane Arbus, uh, maybe uh, mm. uh, what's the? Oh my God, uh, Angela Adams. Do you I, have a favorite? I I don't I don't have one. That's good. So I I work with, yeah I work very project based. So mm. so my interest in other photographers and artists is always very much connected to with my own work or what I'm interested in in the moment. Hmm? So how did you find? Um, so how did you get from photography to what you're doing now? Because right now you are. Uh, you're an educator, right? I, I am an educator mm -hmm. and I am a multidisciplinary uh, conceptual artist. Mm. So I've, yeah, I, I've always been an educator. I started, it's kind of funny. So I was an artist early on, like, um, like many artists who start as kids. Mm. Um, my father had, uh, in the 80s, my father had a workshop. 
like a used car. He, my father was selling used cars. Oh. So, and he had the huge, huge garage and we had the huge backwatch. So it was a backyard you had to take in the country. So, that I took, so, so I grew up, my father himself was very inventive. And this is in Germany? Or in Germany, yeah. in the 80s. What, it part part the of the Germany? what part of Germany was um, this? Northern Germany. So I grew up in really in a very small, let me lie, less than a thousand people, okay. count, countryside town. Nice. Um, Must have been beautiful. It was very beautiful. So it's a, it's a landscape of uh, woods and forest nice. and, and ocean. So being a kid, it was great. And in the 80s, we were kind of unmonitored. Like, mm. there wasn't so much discussion yet about huh? um, safety, like in the U.S. or... Um, well, the 90s and 80s it, here is when our, we, the safety boom started Yeah, off. and when the safety boom... And our childhoods stranger were... Stranger danger. Stranger danger. And our childhoods <laughs> were not so planned. Huh? Yeah, that's so, good. So it was more like your parents would send you out in the morning, go outside and please don't come back before seven o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Have fun. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. So, so, so that's what we did. Is there, is there <laughs> the same kind of um, characterization of a used car salesman? Uh, as in Germany, I'm imagine mm, not because no. in America it's very much mm -hmm. like you're on TV, you've no. got a very ugly tie. No. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of American flags, tons no. of American Cre flags. Crazy no. deals, used car, come on down, my prices are insane. Like that kind of thing. No, not, no, not at all. No? But yeah, at this time. That's got, how'd you got, you got, so you got into photo, taking photography that's, because mm, of that and what's surrounding? I, or that's how I got into making, making stuff. Hmm? Mm, because because, there the was, because we, we had the garage. Yeah. And we had the backyard and there mm. was a lot of nature mm. and um my my parents especially my father were, were very encouraging about playing making adventure yeah. experience. Oh, that's rare huh? that's, that, cool. that's rare but that was yeah. that was the 80s yeah and i had there a was very the... encouraging parents as well yeah. and um sometimes i tell them like you fucked up <laughs> you shouldn't have been so You're supportive me. about me doing art. You should have made me be a doctor or something. Oh, well. Yeah. Or I had another kid so you could but, try but, but my parents <laughs> tried, but luckily a kind of, huh? like the, the early education and making was, was, kind of, was kind of stronger. Yeah. But I, yeah, we grew up like that. And then I remember every technological invention, everything was kind of, kind of a big deal. Mm. Like if you live in the countryside, and you grew up playing with your friends and suddenly there was Walkman and radios and, and the first video recorder. So that was There was a, a lot idea, of technology huh? exploding during yes. the 80s, yeah. and, 80s and, and the 90s. Early 90s. Especially with sounds, you know, from audio, you know, a track, yeah. right. audio tape, you know, records, CDs was oh a big god. one. On CDs, this little yeah. setup would blow their mind in the eighties, right? And like, we, oh. yeah, it's oh my god, everything was kind of mind blowing, and ev everything was super exciting. Yeah, like nowadays, if you tell me, okay, tomorrow we fly to Mars, we are like. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, how, how, much, how much is the ticket? Huh? Right. So oh, it's, it's not a ticket. You have to work uh, in the mines. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna die. But, That's my. I'm gonna die in the lithium mines on Mars or whatever. What, what, what it's kind of sexy. Is. It's kind but of a sexy like, way to go. But in the 80s and 90s, like everything that was technological, yeah. that was was surprising and exciting. No. And especially if you, if you live in the country, there's nothing much else to do other than making and nature and doing yeah. sports because huh, your parents don't want to drive you to the city every day. So then when these things come in, they were just like, we were just very interested in them. Yeah. And we were just taking everything apart and exploring and what, what can you, yeah, what can you do with yeah, them? Yeah, my huh? parents can attest so, to that. I, yeah. Similar, I was a little later because, you know, I was born in 85. So by the time that I was uh, tinkering with stuff, it was probably the late 90s. Uh, but yeah, I had shit all over my room. I would take computers apart, take my toys apart, like try to, you know, mess, I build my own computer. And I actually graduated my... Um, my homeschool because I, I dropped out in the fifth grade uh -huh. and then I had to go to uh, education of some kind. You had to get some certificate, right? So I went to the state uh, and I was in the program for like degenerate kids who like could, got kicked out of school, you know, <laughs> but I had voluntarily left, but, I was, but I was in the badass kid group. 
And um, they they had very low requirements for work. Uh, I ended up passing fifth grade entirely by coding their own website. Like I, I gave them a new website and I coded it in HTML on a notepad, you know, <laughs> on my Windows 95 machine. And they were like, they couldn't comprehend it. And they were like, wow, you passed. And I was like, sweet. But in, hind to do that but in hindsight, aren't the bad days groups always more interesting? Oh, totally. Like you get the reward, I love drunk you, punk you get the reward later. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so uh, you came, when you came to New York, uh, were you planning, uh, do you, did you come here just like everyone else, like me, uh, you know, coming to, to make it as an artist and to get your stuff out there? No. No? I mean, I, I, was, ju I was just interested in, in learning. So what happened I, at art school in Germany, I wasn't interested in photography at all. And mm. I, so I thought I'm going to be an illustrator or a fine artist. Yeah. And at my art school in Germany, everybody, everybody in the first year had to do photography. Oh, yes. And I hated it. <laughs> so I, was, I had no conceptual idea. I had no skills other than using photography to photograph my other artwork. Yeah. But um, I, I couldn't stand to be so bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> so you hated that you were bad at it I more hated, than you hated I had, the medium. I hated more, it more that I'm bad at it yeah. than that I was interested in photography at this point. Mm. So, but everybody has to do it. So ultimately, I start working, working, working. And then um, over time, I developed my interest. Yeah. And I also develop the challenge is actually something that i like it is very that, that's something that i see a lot now too which is like the idea you say you're a conceptual artist mm -hmm. and, and multidisciplinary yes uh to me when i hear that and, and when anyone says it i i always hear like that just means you're you like to explore and you like to experiment and you're not ready to peg yourself on you know one way or another and i think that um that's a good thing and i think that um what you're talking about how you had to do it uh and then you learn that technique like uh and then you move on and you develop something more interesting after that right now i see a ton of uh kind of like anti-intellectualism anti-conceptual art anti-abstract art sentiment and i think it comes from this misconception that um they didn't learn how to paint you know that they that they're make that they're not they're not moving on from learning the technique and they're and they're not experimenting beyond the techniques but they just didn't bother at all and uh, i you know i don't know does that ring true for you yeah in some way so i think that they might have a point in terms of maybe we have to rethink how we educate or what we consider beauty or what or, what yeah. we what definitely also what we um consider beauty but i think wisdom and education does does have meaning yeah yeah definitely mm -hmm. yeah, like, yeah, yeah like there is something to say about uh, about quality and do you think as an art teacher all, all that you feel like things we're in trouble art wise <laughs> like teaching kids like art like you look around you and you're like oh man i i think we are in trouble because i think art is more and more undervalued and it like, continues to be that i feel like in, maybe our country is still like every year it gets a little bit worse and art the, is undervalued in, in, in education yeah. specifically in, right. in in the us and in europe but i think uh, um the issue is that in in many schools and many places i feel art is taught wrong i've mm. been an educator for over 20 years and what you see in in many schools is that and in many art schools that um, children just fo follow a blueprint. Mm. And then you have the exhibition. I live in Park Slope. We have all these art after school programs that are very popular right now. And you see they get one project. Every kid does the same kind of art with the same materials in the same way. Glue the and macaroni on the glue, plate. Glue the macaroni on the plate. Uh -huh. Fold the rows. Yeah. It's like on TV it back in the so, 80s when you And can then like, on top of it, yeah. you, ha you, have this, you have the three best ones. Uh -huh. And then it goes like... Mm, well, yeah, yeah. That, that's kind of... And then, then, then kids are destroyed if you're in the last row. Man, right? If you have the last... It is so, true. People like, ha take it very personally. But if you... Huh? Always a, so, mm. But if you can really consider consider i feel like children's creativity yeah and if you are if you teach art correctly how do you teach it correctly so you teach it to correctly by um 
teaching skills and self-confidence. Like mm. other subjects, if taught correctly, you can teach <clears throat> math skills because they have to measure. Right. You can mm. teach three-dimensional thinking. You're saying art should be in STEM. I think art should be in STEM, absolutely. Yeah. And we should develop better concepts on how, how to teach children art. Wait, well, that means we have to rename it then. It has to be STEAM. That sounds terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Science, technology, <laughs> maybe engineering, that, maybe, art, maybe, math. Yeah. STEAM. I think, uh, I, think, I think a lot of people would object to it, but I yeah. argue that it's because art is misunderstood. Mm. So... Because Why do you think that is? Why do you think where where do we go wrong? Because because we haven't discovered yet for some reason that I do not understand how how much art can ch teach children intellectually if if mm. taught if taught right. Huh? And I'm not talking about only about math and engineering skills and measuring skills, but also in terms of social skills and self-confidence and yeah. collaboration skills. And I'll tell you one thing, you, you know, just hearing the word self-confidence in the context of learning art, you know, it's like, that's one thing I've noticed is even in artists now that, you know, we work with a lot of artists who are probably like 10 years younger than us. Um, Man, is the confidence not there? It's people are cripplingly yeah. uh, self-conscious about anything, and the people who, even the people who are good at it, you yes. know, the people who are have a natural I talent feel it's for holding rendering, somebody back. It's holding so many people back, and like, uh, I don't just, I don't understand why they care so much. Like, where and where we have like this? I think it's a duality of art being held up in some regards mm -hmm. as like the pinnacle of society. Uh, and therefore, it's the person who is doing their first ever figure drawing sketch is comparing themselves to that. And they're like, you know, and then they just immediately start beating themselves up because they're not Michelangelo or Picasso in his youth immediately. Yeah, but, you know? but, but that might have more to do with, with the art market and, mm -hmm. and the cl clang values than, than what right. art is. Huh? Uh, yeah. And art is, art is so many different things for for so many people. I think everybody should make some kind of art. But mm. I also, I would also consider a gardener as an artist or a, a chef as an artist. And they don't do visual art, but... Um, well, not totally. There's a lot of visual art yeah. in, the, in the cooking. It's, it's a saying now, It's right? interesting. Yeah, That's it's true. As long as it tastes good. Just, it's going to taste good too. But it's also, <laughs> for, for me, art, or the kind of art I like, um, provides a connecting, transformative experience. Mm. And we can do that through visual art, but we also can do that through music. We can also, also do that through, through providing a beautiful full garden. Huh? Yeah. So, but these things, of course, you cannot, you cannot sell for, for, they're not an asset in that sense. You cannot sell them uh, yeah, yeah. for millions of dollars. So it's, it's, it's interesting, right? It's Even, a discussion. <laughs> the millions of dollars, the art market stuff. It's like yeah, that yeah. stuff is, um, it's like music. It's like artifacts. It's like selling archaeology. It's like selling what was important then. Now it's worth like, you know, I'm sure like, you know, back in the day when Rothko was kicking those out, they weren't worth $42 million. Like, you know, no one cared immediately. And now they are. And, and people, I think people mistake the, the time that passes and the recognition that comes over the passage of time, uh, they just like forget about that. I wonder They're, if there's any crazy like art teachers out there that like steal their kids' work and say it's theirs and then <laughs> like bring it to an exhibit <laughs> or just like hey, giving her ideas straight up take all the kids' work and sell it on the side. Like, where's I? <laughs> where did my drawing go? But like, it was great, but you don't need it back. I, you I, can do I, much better, and 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 you will. <laughs> oh, you will. I th I think I think it does happen. And, uh, well, I have to be honest, I think children are sometimes the best artists yeah. Yeah, be like because a, they, don't, they don't overthink stuff. You and know they come up good. with shape and forms and ideas True, that are true. magical. I have a great book called um, Why Cats Paint. Oh, and I, I've uh, heard about that. Yeah, yeah. Why Cats Paint and Why Paint Cats. Uh, the first one is about uh, cats that make art. And people like put up a little sheet and they, they dip their paws in the, in the paint <laughs> and then uh, they go crazy. And I don't know if the book's completely bullshit, but there's one called uh, Bootsy and he's got like a snarled little tooth. And it says that he's a trans reductionist, meaning that he uh, paints and then he rips them down. And then like that is uh, <laughs> they give it a funny title, you know, and they... <laughs>
And, and then uh, he sold fifty thousand dollars worth of art. Really? Apparently, yeah. This the cat, cat. The cat. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he's not. He's not showing up. You know, like getting the check. But well, uh, that's kind of messed up because the <laughs> owner is just taking the, the cat's fucking money. I mean, I guess I would I assume that he's getting some nice like whiskers. Some I, extra could fancy probably has could an animal. Yeah. Could an animal that's not a human have a bank account? No, but they can be like. Mayor. Could a cat? They can, you know, excuse me. Why? They can be the mayor. Like we have a town in um in America in California that they elected a dog as the mayor. Well, I wish I was a cat. I'm, I'm more. <laughs> You're a cat person. <laughs> I'm an actual cat for everything relating regarding cats. You love the internet, then. I just. The internet I love the internet. I would love yeah. to see the daily <laughs> operations that this dog has in regards know, right? to like performing as the uh, the mayor. I want to know. I want to yeah. know. I, I want to see this. That's my official Does political it dress up position. In a suit? Yeah, no, yeah, they, they do. They put him in a little tie. They do. Yeah. Because wasn't there a whole thing? I forgot the, the Democrat that the, the refuses to dress in a tie. I forgot his name. He's a, he's a tall dude. And he's like, I don't want to like dress like this. And he shows up in like basketball shorts and like. Oh, oh, you're talking about Fe Fetterman. Fe Fetterman, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> but didn't they say that you do, there, there should be a requisite, like people have to kind of dress up if they come to like a, like. Right. I mean, I dress up for this freaking podcast. Well, so. I'm saying that the, the dog has to dress up. Yeah, like, they have to put a, him in a tie. I don't think there's any mandates. We also have no a mandates. dog. We have a dog mayor here in New York as well. Really? Uh, yeah. So he has a little wiener dog. She just retired, actually. So they're gonna they're gonna um, oh. they're gonna select a new dog mayor. That's my official huh. political stance, though. Like, I try not. We like to talk about art here and creativity. <laughs> so my official political stance is we should hire more animals for high office, uh, and everything will be better. We just have to learn how to talk to them. But yeah, eventually. they're quite intelligent. They, they are. Well, now we now we know. Have you seen those uh, videos online where they have like the buttons and they put out like a bunch of oh, buttons yeah. for the dog? We need Doctor Doolittle. No, but he can but, speak I, to the animals. But I, goes, I, 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 I have. I'm watching the hamsters predicting stock trades. That's my oh, my hamsters right now. predicting stock yeah. trades. I, I haven't heard of this. I, ha I have some. Do they do I have some job? bets on some hamsters. Right you got now. hamster <laughs> stock insiders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. So they get a couple of. <laughs> buttons and then they tell you what's going up so and down. Could you see your conceptual artist, does that mean we could see some art about your ham you should make some art about your hamsters mm. i think that's a that's cool <laughs> i like that kind of thing but it's americanos you, you maybe yeah. <laughs> we do love that we love our stocks and we yeah. love our furry animals yeah uh, what, what's next for you right now like you've been teaching for a while you've been do you have any shows coming up do you have any uh any stuff going on I, where I, can people find you and where can people look you up so people can find me on instagram of course esther Berger is my handle and on the um internet mm -hmm. um, on my website or so do a google search i have a lot of magazine interviews and oh, okay. some exhibitions com coming up i have a newsletter that you can sign up to very nice yeah. how do you like running your website this is something that i've uh, been thinking about a lot like People, we're on different platforms. Uh -huh. We're on like Spotify and, you know, on YouTube and all this stuff. And it just feels like it's really hard to stay on one. And, and you know, we're always getting jerked around. They're changing their policies. Like yeah, yeah. building up. I think that's great advice for young artists is to have your own website, have your own mailing list, like kind of try to control your platform as much as you can. And I'm being a little hypocritical here because I haven't done that yet with Lucky Time. <laughs> and we're in episode 60. But it's a, it's a, lot, it's a lot of work. It, ta it takes a lot of time. It does. But um, I am perfectionist and I, li I, like, I like challenging things. So I like it to look and work, work in a certain way. It's a very German trade. Uh -huh. But it's also, um, and I think that's something that photography taught me. Ch challenging is interesting. Mm. There's obviously a new thing to learn and to discover, and as an educator and an artist, that's something that that I like. Mm. And yeah, I get I I like to I like to do things my way. Yeah, <laughs> I think we all do. I think I'm that's not one... the template kind of. Yeah, I think that's yeah. one thing that uh, we have in common as artists is that we <laughs> we want to do exactly what we want to do, and it's appealing because that's what we have been told yeah, that being and, an artist is and open a conversation yeah. artists ultimately to yeah, absolutely to, and we're going to yeah. continue our conversation here if uh thank you so much for joining us we're wrapping up the free show here on uh, youtube but if you would like to see the full hour please check out our patreon three bucks Try it out. See if you yeah. like it. Download maybe, them in the, in the maybe time. Maybe if you like subscribing to our YouTube channel, I maybe. I'll do that, maybe, if you like this. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for joining us. We'll be it's back worth it. soon. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right.